This tank lasted less than 200 kilometers, 124 miles, before breaking down and requiring major repair or overhaul. This meant it couldn't even use its first tank of diesel before it broke down. Here I'm not talking about some tank, I'm talking about one of the most famous tanks which are even said to be the best and most balanced tanks of World War II. Which tank am I talking about? And why did it break down so fast? We're gonna cover all of this in today's video. Hello and welcome to today's video about the Soviet T-34. Even though the T-34 had wide tracks and a good suspension system which would allow great cross-country performance, there were still several little mistakes in the tank's design which were quite fatal for the tank's reliability. The first versions used in the beginning of Germany's invasion of the Soviet Union had a lot of trouble conducting long road trips. For example, when in June 1941 the 8th Mechanized Corps marched 500 kilometers towards Dubno, the corps lost half of its T-34s just on the way there alone. According to a guy who was there when that happened, the T-34 always lost something or something broke down on the trips that were longer than 200 kilometers. The caterpillars on the tracks of the early models also had to be repaired very often because they broke even without a shell or a bullet hitting it. When earth got stuck between the road wheels, the caterpillar strained to such an extent that the pins and tracks themselves couldn't hold out. It was even worse when the tank was turning. In 1942, the Soviet Union donated two T-34s to the US for testing purposes. The US was for real with the Soviets and gave them very honest feedback about the T-34's suspension. It was unconditionally rejected. Reason why was because testing showed that the suspension very quickly fatigued and as a result clearance was noticeably reduced. The Americans also criticized the tracks, stating they could easily be damaged by small caliber and mortar rounds. The pins were very poorly tempered and made of poor steel which meant they could break very often. And this was true. Another major issue re revealed during the US testing of the T-34 was that the engine could come to a halt from absorbing dust and sand. Reason for that was that the air filter used was totally ineffective and had insufficient airflow capacity. This meant that the engine didn't get enough oxygen and therefore could not operate at its full capacity. For instance, if your lungs had half as much volume as they have now, you wouldn't be able to run as fast as you could now, just for you to visualize this issue. This air filter problem was later solved by adding new filters to the T-34 model 1943 and then an even better filter on the version on the T-34-85. More American testing showed that the turret drive suffered from poor reliability as well. Another problem was that because the steel side friction clutches were poorly machined and transmission was outdated and poorly manufactured, mechanical failure occurred very often and created an inhuman harshness for the driver. And all these problems combined led to the tank not really getting that far. In June 1943, only about 7.7% .7 of the newest T-34 tanks could complete a 330 km trial without breaking down. It took the Soviets about 8 months to fix this number. In February 1944, a whopping 78% could complete this trial. But at later points this number dropped back to 57%, but hey, still better than just 7.7. .7. Even the Germans found out about the T-34's unreliability after they captured and tested them on their own. Here is what one of their reports said. Despite not having much experience yet, it can be said that the Russian battle tank is not suitable for carrying out long marches as well as high speed marches. A maximum driving speed of 10 to 12 km an hour has become convenient. During the marches and in order to allow the engines to cool down, it is absolutely necessary to make a stop every half an hour for a minimum duration of between 15 and 20 minutes. Steering gears have caused problems and breakdowns on all new battle tanks. In difficult terrain during the gears or also during the course of attacks where many changes of directions are made, the steering clutch heats up and covers with oil quickly. Consequently, the clutch does not engage and it is impossible to maneuver the vehicle. Once it has cooled down, the clutch should be cleaned with copious amounts of fuel. 
In other parts of the world, the crew drives the tank. In Soviet Russia, the tank drives the crew. I don't think much more needs to be said, and I don't have much more to say anyways. If you like this video, please take the second to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.